you feel better. At least, you're supposed to. The emails are quiet, the deadline passed, the problem is over. But inside, something's not sinking. Your body stopped reacting, but your mind didn't follow. You breathe slower, but your chest still feels tight. You sleep, but you wake up tired. You sit down to focus, and your thoughts drift. Not to anything in particular, they just scatter. You're not anxious, you're not depressed, but you can't quite land. It's like your nervous system is still waiting for something to go wrong. And no matter how quiet your life becomes, your brain refuses to believe it. This is the aftermath. The slow, silent space after the burnout, where nothing explodes, but nothing repairs either. There's a phrase in neurobiology, allostatic load. It's the cost your body pays for adapting to prolonged stress. Not once, not for a day, but over weeks, months, years. You adjusted, you coped, you made it through. But your system didn't reset. It built new patterns, fast reacting, high alert, low recovery systems. Electrical signals that used to rise and fall gently now stay sharp and narrow. Heart rate variability, flattened. Vagal tone, suppressed. Emotional resilience, short-circuited. And what's terrifying is, you didn't even notice it happening, because this wiring felt like strength, until it didn't. We call it functional freeze. Your body still moves, you still respond, but you're not fully present. It's not laziness, it's not weakness, it's conservation. Your brain, overwhelmed for too long, finally said, I'm done spending energy on anything that isn't survival. So your emotions go numb, your creativity vanishes, your sense of self starts to hollow out. And the worst part is, no one notices. Because you're still productive, still smiling, still showing up. And deep inside, you wonder if anyone would care if you just stopped feeling completely. But here's what most people miss. Burnout doesn't begin when you're exhausted. It begins the moment effort becomes your identity. The moment you start believing your worth is measured in usefulness, that your stillness is laziness, that your needs are distractions. You adapt, you become efficient, and in doing so, you train your brain to suppress all signals that aren't productive. Joy, wonder, grief, curiosity, they all become irrelevant. The brain's prefrontal cortex, the region responsible for decision-making, emotional regulation, and reflection, starts to dim. The amygdala, your fear response center, strengthens. You're no longer prioritizing what matters. You're prioritizing what keeps you ahead of the next threat. This isn't a mental block. This is bioelectric miswiring. Electrical impulses that once flowed in balance now fire like sparks from frayed cables. And when this becomes chronic, your vagus nerve, the bridge between brain and body, stops regulating. You lose access to calm, not because you forgot, but because the switch is broken. So what do you do? You push harder, you read more books, you try new routines, but nothing lands because you're not unmotivated, you're neurologically fatigued. Your system doesn't need advice, it needs permission to stop, to unravel, to remember. And here's the paradox. Resting doesn't work, not because you don't know how, but because your nervous system doesn't believe it's safe. When you lie still, your body braces. When the day slows, your mind accelerates. Because for years, stillness meant falling behind. And so your internal wiring flags silence as danger. This is why burnout isn't fixed with sleep. It's only healed by rewiring what the body thinks stillness means. And that's not a mindset. It's a bioelectric rehabilitation. Here's what we now know. Recovery isn't passive, it's deliberate. You must train your body to feel safe in stillness again. And the science supports it. Research shows that slow, controlled exhalation, longer than your inhale, reactivates vagus nerve tone. Cold water against the face stimulates the mammalian dive reflex, dropping your heart rate instantly. Gentle humming vibrates the laryngeal branch of the vagus, sending a message up the nerve to reduce inflammation and downregulate panic. This is no longer theory. This is measurable, and it works, but only when done from a place of curiosity, not control. So here's the shift. Stop chasing recovery. Start restoring rhythm. Don't wait for burnout to collapse you. Listen for the signs. Can't focus, emotional flatness, minor memory issues, these aren't flaws, they're electrical feedback. Your brain is not broken, it's just exhausted from holding on to an identity you were never meant to sustain. Tonight, unplug with intention, no scrolling, no fixing, no forcing. Sit in the quiet, place one hand on your chest, one hand on your belly, and just breathe. Let the air land in your body like it belongs there. Because it does, you do.
You are not your output. You are not your inbox. You are not your next goal. You are a living, electric system designed for harmony, not hustle. If this video made your nervous system exhale, leave a comment. Not for me, for you. To mark this moment, the one where you stopped surviving long enough to feel yourself coming back online. You're not broken, you're just rewiring.